Hello there, adventure, and welcome to the Guild Hall, where every week we discuss Dungeons and Dragons and anime. I'll be honest, I've been doing this channel for a little while now, and the learning curve has been enormous. Granted, I have a background in animation and motion design, so admittedly, I thought this was going to be a bit easier than it's been. The reality is that over the past two weeks, I've been pouring over tutorials and tips and tricks videos for everything from how to make certain transitions to how to get the word out about this channel. Honestly, though, it has been a great time. I love doing it and I love making these videos. What it has brought up, though, is a sensation I haven't really felt since I started DMing years ago, which is imposter syndrome. When I first started DMing, I was constantly afraid that something was going to happen in game that would totally blow up in my face. I was worried about my players' expectations and whether or not I could create a compelling campaign. Now, I'm several years into DMing pretty regularly, and having played with a bunch of groups, I can fairly confidently say I'm not the worst DM ever. At the very least, I know I can say that we'll probably get through our session having had a pretty darn good time. But it took time to get there. And this week, I've put together my five tips as to how best to get there and feel more confident in your burgeoning DMing skills. My first tip is background amateur class DM, or we are not pros. Remember that you are an amateur, with the exception of Matt Mercer, some other live streamers, and a few companies that literally rent out quote unquote professional DM. We really are not professional. I'm not a professional. You're probably not a professional. And while a lot of people may jump on YouTube and tell us all how to do this or that, they're not really professionals either. They're people playing a game and sharing their opinions about it. Nothing wrong with my views or beliefs because I have freedom of speech and everything I'm saying is true. None of us are getting paid to do this. Do this, I mean DMing. We have no contractual obligation here. We just as much as our players are playing a game and nothing more. So if imposter syndrome is this complex that puts in our minds the idea that we're unqualified and that it's only a matter of time until someone notices, own the fact that you are an amateur and shatter for yourself and your players any preconceived notion that by being the DM, you somehow have ascended to some role-playing celestial heights of perfection. Take the weight of this professional performance off of yourself. You don't need to be the best voice actor, world builder, or improviser. Those are all fine goals, but ones that will be realized with time. Even as you begin to realize some of those goals, you'll discover new challenges and aspects of your DMing that you want to develop further. But the bottom line is that today and 10 years from now, you will likely still be an amateur playing a game. Embrace that mindset, be open and honest about it, and accept for that as long as any of us are playing this game, we will be learning and growing. Second tip, be a lore bard. What do I mean by this? Do I mean bring a binder filled with mythology and history of every person and civilization that has ever existed in this fantasy world of yours and be ready to speak about it at length? No, 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 no. What I mean is be your player's biggest fan. Love and support your players and their characters. Lord bards, storytellers, are telling the tales of characters they believe in, who they want to see succeed. D&D is a game of communal storytelling. If you're concerned about being an imposter, that you're not good enough for your players, the fastest way to earning their respect is not by throwing at them the most difficult encounters or the most far-flung realms, but by showing to them that they can trust you with their characters, their creations. So how do we do this? 
Coining the wisdom of Aaron Sorkin, drama is about intention and obstacles. Player characters almost always have an intention to what they are doing, and the dungeon master puts obstacles in their way to create drama, to create conflict. Being a lore bard in this instance means caring more about the player characters and their intention and helping to see that intention realized than you do care about the obstacle. DMs can be somewhat sadistic. All of us love throwing a difficult encounter at our players from time to time. And at times, this is certainly appropriate. But it should be born out of a place of understanding that this is what the players need at that moment. The obstacle needs to be organic to the intention. If you have a baddie that you are dead set on being the star, but your players just don't seem interested in pulling that thread, or other NPCs suddenly make more sense as being the antagonist, don't force an obstacle you've fallen in love with on the party. Don't make make progress impossible for them unless they confront your preconceived definition of the obstacle. Maybe you planned an encounter where the party gets ambushed by a gang of bugbears, but with some quick thinking, your party turns the table and devastates your and the bugbears' plans. You might be feeling pretty salty here, but try to fight that urge. Don't suddenly bring in a second troop of bugbears that also have a beholder in their party because you feel like the players got it too easy. Appreciate what happened. Their intent as a party was to go get a breakfast burrito. They were jumped by a band of bugbears and your PCs gave them a smackdown. That's awesome. Let your players gloat. Let them go get that breakfast burrito feeling like the biggest, baddest heroes in the realm. Get in on the joking and the backslapping yourself. Again, some of the best episodes of shows like The West Wing were when an easy, unexpected victory was had and it resulted in another, larger obstacle appearing. In this case, maybe it's that the gang of bugbears was working for a beholder and now the party has a very powerful enemy that they don't know about yet. The point here, though, is that as a DM, you should be rooting for your player characters and understand that the obstacles you choose for them are there for them to overcome. That is what creates the drama, the adventure, the conflict. This doesn't mean that you can't put difficult challenges in front of them. Quite the contrary. What it means, though, is that their intentions are your biggest priority. When you develop a culture around your table where the players come to understand and trust that, I promise they won't care a tit about how perfect your accent is or how bizarre the setting you chose was. Be a lore bard. Help tell your player's story and they will love and trust you for it. Number three, be a planeswalker. Okay, yes, maybe this terminology isn't exactly 5e, but hear me out. Being a planeswalker, especially if you're starting out or are still feeling a bit overwhelmed by so much of this D&D content, means that you should be DMing horizontally, not vertically. For me, vertical DMing would be something like running one campaign all the way through to level 20. It's like getting your doctorates in one campaign. Sure, you'll know your characters really well. Maybe you'll come to know a lot about your setting, but at the end of it, a lot of that knowledge and expertise will feel really specific to that campaign. When you're looking to build a breadth of knowledge and experience in a short amount of time, horizontal play can be really great. This might mean running a series of one-shots or short campaigns for your players. Maybe if you are already committed to playing a long campaign, work in an actual playing jump where the characters in this other realm are avatars of themselves, but find these avatars have new races and classes for a few sessions. You can change the locations, lore, levels of magic, and types of combat and social encounters while the players can change what types of characters they're playing. 
adopting this horizontal campaign jumping style, even if only for a short while, builds a wider understanding of the game and how it's designed. Suddenly, when you begin to see how melee weapon attacks or spells are used across several different types of classes and in different scenarios, it broadens your overall understanding of the game in a way that just seeing your barbarian use their rage the same way week in and week out cannot. Number four, be a chronergy wizard. Take time and knowledge into your hands and make it your power. First in game, if things aren't going as planned, don't be afraid to press pause and stop game time. This can be a result of so many things. A discussion about the rules as written, a major unexpected character decision, Hell, you misplaced your monster stat block. Don't sweat it. Press pause. The players are not an opposing defensive line, and you're not a QB. Don't be afraid of them blitzing you if you don't have every answer at your fingertips. Most players will appreciate a DM who can say, let's take a break, regroup, and move on, rather than one who feels obligated to make a split-second decision just to keep the game rolling. Second is the out of game time. Maybe something really did not go as planned. It happens. Maybe a player is upset about a ruling or you aren't feeling satisfied with how an encounter went and you can't quite put your finger on the reason why. Circle back to your players and get their input. This kind of goes back to being a lore bard because it puts the players and your intentions and expectations front and center and creates a space where you can all discuss it away from the game. Also, this allows you time to reflect and rework, essentially doubling your experience with a single encounter. I'll give you a personal example. In a campaign I was running, the characters were facing off against a big bad who had assembled a massive army. I wanted to get the party through the battlefield, which was full of enemy combatants in a timely manner, while still creating a feeling of chaos and intensity like you might see in a movie like Gladiator or Braveheart. My idea was to run a series of skill checks as the characters made their way across the battlefield. I then narrated what happened as a result of these checks. The issue was that outside of my narration, the players themselves weren't really making many decisions. It was kind of fun, but it could have been a whole lot better. As soon as the game session was over, I opened it up to the group and took feedback as to how they thought it went. After I got the feedback, we workshopped some solutions as to how else it could have been handled and landed on something really compelling. I've used that mechanic now several times in other games to great effect. Being a chronergy wizard is about controlling the time you do have and with it, be it by yourself or with the help of your players, gaining greater knowledge. The last one is not entirely dissimilar to being a chronergy wizard. The last tip is to be a mind flare reach out to unwitting DMs and suck their brains dry. No, I'm kidding. But what I mean is join that hive, join that collective. And by getting in there and listening to what they have to say, you'll very quickly feel more assurance around your own decision making. One option is to reach out to other DMs you may know in real life. Frankly, i found no other group is more willing to dive in deep and share their knowledge than your fellow Dungeon Masters. In my experience, many of the Dungeon Masters I know personally have either been playing a lot longer than I have or started out around the same time. This means I have both a wealth of experience and people going through similar challenges to bounce my ideas off of. And frankly, sometimes what you are working through, you want to keep away from your players. How do I run this monster type? This one player keeps making really crazy decisions. Why can't I get my party to do more social interactions? These are conversations that you can't really have with the players, 
but are the kind of stuff that most dungeon masters love diving in deep over. We are also uniquely gifted in the wealth of DM knowledge that is available to us nowadays through platforms like YouTube, Discord, and Reddit. Reach out to these communities away from your game sessions and assault them with questions. Rather than spending hours on end poring over the differences between a red slat or a blue slat or making sure you have the family name of every NPC you will ever run prepared in your DM compendium of all things, use that time to ask questions. Don't be a sorcerer. Be a mind flare or at least a wizard. Knowledge that is going to make you feel more confident is already out there. Don't hope that it will just magically manifest itself within you during gameplay. For a lot of this, you don't have to go through half a dozen full campaigns to get where you want to be. Just be greedy with knowledge. So, those are my five tips. I've been DMing for just about as long as I've been playing. I promise that if as you're watching Critical Role or remembering playing with your first amazing, mind-blowing dungeon master, and now you're feeling imposter syndrome, that I have felt it as well. As I look back on my time DMing though, these five tips are a large part of what has helped me from secretly being nerve wracked during our game sessions to being a somewhat competent and hopefully enjoyable dungeon master. At the end of the day, take one tip. Take all five tips. Take none of them. It doesn't matter. The biggest thing to remember is that by being a DM, you're doing a great thing by giving a group of friends a chance to come together and go on an epic adventure. That fact alone should give you a great deal of confidence. If you have any more questions, thoughts, or concerns, leave a comment below. If as a DM you've gone through some of this, let us know about it and discuss. We can all be better dungeon masters together. And in the meantime, as always, safe journeys, adventurer. <laughs>